In less than a week, Samsung is holding its second Galaxy Unpacked event of the year. And we're expecting it to have a whole host of products to launch, including foldables, wearables, and perhaps other computing products. For the first time, the company is hosting this event in its home country of South Korea. Does this mean bands like BTS or Blackpink might show up? Who knows? Barring any surprise celebrity K-pop appearances, here's what we think might show up at Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked next week. As has become tradition sort of with Samsung, the second Unpacked of the year is usually devoted to its Galaxy Z line of folding devices. This year, we're expecting to see the Galaxy Z Fold 5 as well as the Galaxy Z Flip 5. In fact, Samsung's TM Row recently published a blog post telling us basically that there will be new, thinner foldables as well as wearables and maybe tablets next week. As for specific models of devices, this year we're expecting to see the Z Fold 5 and the Z Flip 5 since last year was Generation 4 after all. So based on some marketing renders that may have been leaked, we're seeing that the Galaxy Z Fold 5 may use a so-called water drop hinge to allow it to close completely flat, no more gap in between the two halves of that foldable screen. And frankly, that's basically everything we know, really. I mean, some of the other differences are very, very minor. For example, the camera flash has changed location. There might be some slightly slimmer bezels. It's not a lot to go off of. We're anticipating specs to mostly stay the same as last year's model, which includes a 6.2-inch Full HD display on the outside and a 7.6-inch QHD screen on the inside. And this should come as a surprise to no one, but powering the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is reportedly the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy chipset that's inside the Galaxy S23 lineup. Like I said, there's really not much else we expect from the Z Fold 5. The device looks like it's going to be a lot similar to its predecessor. Moving on, however, to the Z Flip 5, and this one has me pretty excited. According to some of the marketing renders that have leaked, there is going to be a larger external display. According to pictures that were possibly leaked by a website called My Smart Price, the external display on the Z Flip 5 now covers pretty much all of the outside half. If you'll recall, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and other flip-style foldables like this tended to have tiny cover displays. On the Z Flip 4, that was a 1.9-inch panel that really didn't do much except for let you swipe through a preloaded set of widgets. If Samsung's external display is anything like Moto's Razer Plus that I reviewed earlier this year, this might allow it to do just so much more stuff. So we obviously don't know all the details on how that will behave just yet, but I would love for Samsung to make it very similar to Motorola's approach, where it basically just runs full Android on that outside screen. Because not only would that make the external display way more useful, it could also help with conserving battery life. Speaking of, we're expecting the Z Flip 5 to also have a similar uh, processor to its predecessor. But just like the Z Fold 5, the Z Flip 5 is expected to also use that water drop hinge that will enable sort of a gapless design as well as minimize that crease you see on the folding screen. There's a lot we don't know about some of the other specs, especially around camera performance or software. So we'll probably have to wait till next week when Samsung reviews all the details to learn all about that. Of course, the foldables are going to be the highlight of the show, but Samsung's smartwatch line is actually among the most popular Android smartwatches out there too. The Galaxy Watch series is due for its sixth generation, and so we're expecting to see the Galaxy Watch 6 series. According to the rumors we've seen so far, there will be at least two new models of the Galaxy Watch 6. One of them sports a rounder, cleaner design than its predecessor, while the other, rumored to be a 6 Pro model potentially, brings back that physical spinning bezel that we all know and love, at least if you're an Android smartwatch fan. Across the two models, we're also expecting to see a new wearable processor as well as larger batteries. Now, instead of being called a Pro model, Samsung might retain that classic branding that is used for previous generations uh, of the Galaxy Watch series that featured that physical rotating bezel. So it's very likely this might be called the Watch 6 Classic instead of the Watch 6 Pro. Not to forget, Samsung also made a Watch 5 Pro model last year, which really felt underwhelming, especially compared to Apple's Watch Ultra. So it remains to be seen whether the company updates that model as well. One other area of updates to the uh, Galaxy 
Galaxy Watch lineup that we'll probably have to wait till next week to learn more about is in the software. We're anticipating that the Galaxy Watch 6 series will get One UI 5 with Wear OS 4 updates that could make the watch way more useful. Another thing that Samsung is widely known for in the Android ecosystem anyway is its tablets. Samsung makes arguably the best premium Android tablets around. Sorry, Pixel. This year at Unpacked, Samsung is expected to unveil the Tab S9 series. Because Samsung's already refined the physical design of the Tab S series so much, it really doesn't have a lot more to do here. Um, but we're expecting to see a return to AMOLED on the Tab S9 series, as well as more powerful processors. The aesthetic here we're hearing is going to be very similar to the Galaxy S23 lineup and be more durable. If the Galaxy Tab S9 series is anything similar to its predecessor, then there will be three models, a Tab S9, Tab S9 Plus, and Tab S9 Ultra. And that last one is likely to have a larger, close to 15-inch display, as well as more powerful guts. Across the lineup, we're also expecting to see updated processors, whether it's the Tab S9 or the Tab S9 Ultra. I'm expecting some form of improved S Pen performance or support on these tablets, since the stylus is also one of the things Samsung is best known for, but really we don't know all the details, and they're especially scarce when it comes to the tablets. So again, we'll have to wait and see next week. Unlike Apple, Samsung's not typically a one more thing kind of company, but who's to say they don't change their mind this year because they're holding it in South Korea? And the rumor mill thinks that the one more thing or two more things that Samsung may have up its sleeve next week is a foldable tablet called the Galaxy Tab Z. People also think Samsung may be readying a more mid-range affordable model of its Tab S series called the Tab S8. FE. I personally don't think Unpack is the place that Samsung is going to launch this device. So if it does come out around this time of year, chances are we won't see it next week. That's quite a lot of products that we're expecting to see out of Samsung next week. In fact, at last count, I think that was about 9 to 10 devices. If you want to watch it all unfold live, you can come to Engadget.com on July 26th at about 7 a.m. Eastern or slightly earlier because we will be live vlogging the event and we have someone on the ground in Korea too. So between now and then, tell us what you think Samsung is going to unveil and what you think might be the wild card. Are BTS going to be there? Is Blackpink going to be there? Or maybe even Psy or Espa? Leave a note in the comments letting us know. And until then, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. Meanwhile, I'll just be over here fantasizing about using the Z Flip 5's external display.